Okay. Hello, everyone. We're here again with a lesson. Jesus, the light of the world. And in this lesson, you will see the woman caught in adultery is not just a story. A truth of God is being taught in what occurred here. We're going to walk up to how this came about. We always hear the beginning and the end at the same time. The woman caught in a very act of adultery. There's a lot more to that beyond that story. The Bible truth is always missed. But today, I hope I can give you that Bible truth of that woman being caught in adultery. And you can see two things that should have occurred, but only one did. Amen? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we again stand before your congregation to deliver your word and the truth that you gave it, adding nothing to it, nor taking away anything from it, not converting the truth of God into a story, but keeping the truth of God as the truth of God. Thank you, Father, for letting me present it today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, the light of the world. From John chapter 8, verses 12 through 27. Jesus, the light of the world. Now, this is a topic that's being used. But let's never forget, the word of God is instructional, not topical. And we present it in the manner that God gave it as an instruction. Those topics are added to his word. Amen? Let's look at the introduction. In John chapter 8, Jesus had come early in the morning into the temple. Now, let's look at this. Jesus was in Galilee because he went to Galilee because the Jews were seeking to kill him. So he was in Galilee instead of Jerusalem. We need to make that point very clear. And as you study John 8 further, you see where he said that he's in Galilee because the Jews sought to kill him. To kill him. See, everything has its practical point, and there's a purpose for everything that's in the Word of God. They sought to kill him to silence the truth. In John chapter 8, Jesus has come early in the morning into the temple. Notice, sometimes you hear the teaching, it says early in the morning he had come to the church. The church had not been born yet. The church was the body of Christ. A building not made with hands. That was a church. He was still walking. He was still in this earth. So he had appeared into the temple. The temple. And the temple is not the body of Christ until we get to the church. And when the church was born, Paul said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of God, not the building that is occurring here. The people that came, he sat them down and began to teach them. They were scribes and Pharisees. And that's in verse 2. Scribes and Pharisees brought to him, and here we go, this is where the story began, of the woman caught in adultery. Well, let's listen to the truth, the instruction that will follow this narrative. Scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman taken in adultery. Now, you know, adultery is a person having illicit sex with a married person, whether it be male or female. And she was caught in the very act of adultery. So she must have been with a man who had a wife. Don't forget that. They wanted a response from Jesus about this matter. And told Jesus that Moses and the law. Now this instruction is about to come. 
pay attention. That Moses and the law declared that she should be brought, they should be, should be stoned. What do you say about it? They're put, trying to put Jesus on the spot. And he's teaching now. Moses and the law said she should be stoned. What do you say? Now listen to this. Now this is where we divert from being a story to the truth of God as is what is occurring here. If they would have been sincere, these men who brought this woman in adoption to Jesus, if they would have been sincere, according to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 10, why didn't they bring the man also? They just brought her. The only law, Leviticus chapter 20, said a man should also have been brought, but they only brought the woman. So they were not sincere in what they did. Why didn't they bring the man? And Jesus said this. We need to pay attention to this because we find ourselves doing this. Jesus did not come to judge as they wanted him to do. But Jesus did not come to judge, but to save. That's in John chapter 3, verse 17. According to the law, the man and woman should have been stoned to death. But they only brought the woman to suffer this consequence. So they were not sincere in their judgment. Now, this is what Jesus did, knowing that they were in error. Jesus challenged them with the law. They wanted Jesus to condemn this woman because of the law. Jesus challenged them with the law. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, Verse 7, he who is without sin cast the first stone. We need to pay attention to that in our own life. All of us in the house of God came here with sin. And we were cleaned up and placed in his, to his body. Salvation of Christ. The church is made up of converted Sinners who had now been cleaned up by the blood of the Lamb. So we all came through sin, but we came, but we got washed in the blood of the Lamb. So be careful when you condemn somebody, because you were once that person yourself. They were convicted. When Jesus said this, they were convicted. We need to pay attention to this as well. See, this is why this is not a story. This is why these are instructions. This is why God had them placed into his written word that we can understand what he was about. They were convicted by their own conscience of what they had intended to do. They were convicted by their own conscience by what they intended to do. He said, you would have sinned, cast the first stone, but they didn't. They were convicted by their own kind. Then one by one, they went away. Now this part that Jesus is about to say to the woman, those who are in this condition, use this part to stay and remain in that condition saying that Jesus gave her. Oh, he did. But let's not miss what he said after he forgave her. This also before I say what he Jesus told her, the word of God says, confess and forsaken. 
Forsake means stop it. Don't do it. Confess and forsake. But we will confess, go back and do it again, and say, Lord, forgive me. You know my heart. I'm just in the flesh. He knows that. Jesus said unto the woman, Because none of your accusers, now you got to pay close attention to this, because none of your accusers condemn you. Now that's what he said. Neither do I. Neither do I. Then he went on to say, Go and sin no more. Let's see what he said again. He forgave her. And then he said, go and sin no more. He didn't say go and do it again and come back. We need to pay attention to this. He told her, do not do it again. You find that in John chapter 8, verses 9 through 11. So you'll see this is not just a story. These are instructions that are being taught to us by the Master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he means every word that he says. He says in Isaiah, the same Jesus when he's God in the Spirit, my word have gone out from me in righteousness and shall not return unto me void. They're going to return to me the same way I sent it out. Look what he sent out here. Look what he sent out. He told a woman, go and sin no more. Don't wear that shoe again. Keep it off your feet. Now, when he did this, he continues his teachers beginning at verse 12. And that's where our lesson began. He continues his teaching beginning at verse 12. Now, you see, this is not a story. This is not just a story. These are instructions. As to what you should stop doing. As to what you should not be caught again in doing. Speaking of adultery. By the law. So don't make any excuses anymore. Pay attention to what Jesus said. Go. And. Now notice he's going to go, go, go home. Go away. Go wherever where he came from. Go back. But go and sin. No more. Isn't that something? Amen. Verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them. These were the same people he was speaking with when these Pharisees and Sadducees brought a woman caught in adultery to him, trying to catch him in some kind of fabrication. But he took their own law and defeated them. So he turned again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk, that means live, in darkness, but shall have the light of life. But shall have. That's future perfect tense. If you walk in God. You shall have the light of life. The light of life is Christ. And the only way you're going to have the light of life. Is to follow his instructions. Not your own dictates. The word of God said. In all of our getting. Getting an understanding. If you fail to get that understanding, you're going to be lost. Jesus spoke again unto them, 
that were gathered. These were the ones that were that he was speaking to before he was interrupted by those bringing the woman to him. Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I would like for you to read Isaiah 49 and 6. In the Old Testament, and see, this is not the first time he has been declared as the light of the world. He was way back in scriptures. If you follow me, you shall not walk in darkness, but shall but have the light of life. The only way that you're going to have salvation and the light of life is to walk and follow Jesus Christ. That's, again, an, an instruction that we oftentimes miss when we hear three things. This is more than three things coming out of here. This is the word of God with instructions for the salvation of our souls. Verse 13, the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of yourself. Your record is not true. They say, you're talking about yourself. You bear witness of yourself. Record of yourself. So how can we believe what you're saying is true? The Pharisees insisted upon following the tradition of the elders, and that's keeping the whole law. And that's keeping the whole law. Jesus was violating their belief by teaching God. If you remember in Revelation, I believe it's somewhere in chapter 7, somewhere back there, we got to remember this. Some of us still try to Keep portions of the law. John said in the book of Revelation, if you're going to be responsible for part of the law or keep part of the law, you're going to be responsible for all of the law and the curses thereof. The church is under grace and not under law. But a lot of us try to put portions of the law under grace. Grace and the law is like oil and water. It cannot mix. Pharisees were the strictest sect of Judah, Judaism. That was for Paul in Acts chapter 25, verse 5. Remember, Paul says before he was converted, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Ain't nothing under the law I did not do. Ain't on nothing on the law I did not follow. Before his conversion, Paul was known as the Pharisee of Pharisees. The Pharisees told Jesus, you bear record, record only of yourself. Your record is false. It is not true. Now what they're saying, you just told us about our law says you got to have two or three witnesses, and you just bear a record of yourself. So what you're saying is not true. You, 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 you're spilling on your own self. Where's your witness? Where's your witness? They said, you have no witnesses as to whom you are. We have only your word and nothing else. You have no witnesses. We have only a word and nothing else. And he just told them about Deuteronomy. Jesus was being accused of boasting by the Pharisees. He was being accused of boasting. In John chapter 5, verse 37 to 38, Jesus had already affirmed to them. Listen to this now. Jesus had already affirmed to them that the Father, that's God, himself sent him and bear witness of Jesus, him. 
The Father is bearing witness of me. He is the one who sent me. Jesus went on to say that they were never heard God's voice nor seen his shape. My witness, you have never heard a voice nor seen his shape. That's my witness. But yet, you said, my witness is not true. My witness is false. Those of us who are in Christ, we say we have the Holy Ghost. I know I have the Holy Ghost, but I have never seen it. I felt it moving inside of me. And the Bible declared it would, believing on him. So I've never seen it, but I know it's real. And he bears witness inside me. Inside me, as he should inside you, that you are saved and sanctified. Verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto them. Now notice this. When they approached Jesus with this foolishness, he didn't just let him say something and walk away. He always responded. Jesus answered and said unto them, and I was more than one, there was a group of them, though I bear witness of myself, you know, uh, let's look at us earthly interpretation of that. Yeah, many people say they've been called to preach. I've been called to preach by God. They are bearing witness of themselves. Only. They have no witness when God called them to preach. We have to believe them and acknowledge and accept them. We will know whether or not they've been called to preach by the words and life that they live and say. That's the only inclination because there is no witness other than what we hear and see. Tough words, but true words. Do I bear witness of myself? Yet my father, let my record, it's true. Do I bear record, witness of myself? My record is true. See, Jesus got a record. The record is true. The record is true. For I know whence I came. He know where he came from. I know where I came from. And I know where I'm going. And I know where I'm going. But you cannot tell where I came from and where I would go. You can't do it. I can. But I'm bad record of that which you do not know. I got, I got records to prove who I am. And guess what? It's not by sight. Spiritual. And those who have observed and seen Jesus know his record is true. Because nothing he did and said was proven to be false. So his record was true. You got to understand that when people say I'm a prophet. Prophet this and prophet that. The word of God said, if you are a prophet, you should be able to raise the dead, make the blind to see, make the lame to walk. You should be able to do all of that. But yet, you can't, but you say you are a prophet. So that means your record is not true. You're a false prophet. That's an apostle had to do the powers of God. God gave his power to his apostles. The apostles had the power given by Jesus himself to raise the dead, make the lame to walk, and the blind to see. Remember when Peter and John was at the temple gate and the lame man was there and he was begging for money. And this is what an apostle could do. 
He and John Peter spake, silver and gold. Have we none? But such as I have, give I unto thee. He didn't give him no money. He didn't give him no silver. He didn't give him no gold. He just took his hand and said, rise, get up, and walk. That's an apostle. A true apostle who was witness of the resurrection. The Bible says the apostle had to witness the resurrection, had to witness the risen Christ. That's an apostle. If you have not witnessed the risen Christ, you are not an apostle. You have not the powers of the risen Christ. You're not an apostle. You're an imposter. Amen. We have to look at the fact that in John chapter 5, 37, 38, Jesus had already affirmed who he was. And they denied it. Okay? Verse 14. Again, I want you to emphasize. This is not a story. These are instructions. And these instructions will only be understood by the spiritual mind and the spiritual man. There are many natural men who hear the same instructions from our Lord and Savior and resist it. They will say even now, what Brother Kennedy said is not true. Go to the Bible and prove me wrong. That's all I ask. Verse 14. Jesus answered and said unto them, Do I bear record of myself? Yet my record is true. Is that right? It is true. Because we are witnesses of that truth. Even what? Today. For I know whence I came and where I'm coming from. Do you know where you came from, class? Do you know where you came from and where you're going? <laughs> when you leave this world, do you know where you're going? Uh, we, have a, we have an etern eternal hope. Our eternal hope is everlasting life. And to have the everlasting life, you must be filled with God's spirit. Because he said, his spirit is he going to raise on that last day. That's the church. The spiritual church, not the natural church. Verse 15. This is a tough one. You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Jesus said, you judge after the flesh. I judge no man. Inside the spiritual church, there's too much judging of one another. The instruction from our master says, I judge no man. I judge no man. But yet, we have a lot of judges in the natural church. Jesus said that you there's a warning to this now. Jesus said that you are who are judging me after the flesh. After the flesh, I judge no man. The Lord and Master and Savior said, I judge no man. This is strictly judgment of the flesh, not spiritual. This is strictly judgment in the, of the flesh, not spiritual. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, in verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged. Judge not that ye be not judged. Jesus said in verse 2 of Matthew 7, For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what means you meet, it shall be sent back to you. The judge you play, judgment you place on one will be placed back on you. Because you have no responsibility or instruction by Lord and Savior to judge. He said, don't judge. Because whatever judge you've made up on somebody, 
That same judgment going to come back on you. We don't pay no attention to that. Why? Because we don't follow the instructions that God has given us. And we did, we start judging one another. That is not our job to judge one another. And he said, whatever measure you put out on anyone, that same measure shall be returned to you. That is some deep stuff that you put yourself in. And he almost, I'm going to say again, he said, in all thy getting, get understanding. And you got understanding, you stop this. You stop judging. Verse 16 and 17. And yet, this is Jesus now, not you. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. Is your judgment true? It can't be because you're judging the flesh. And Jesus just said about that. He said, my judgment is true. For I am not alone in my judgment. You're alone in your judgment, except you get a lot of backup following your judgment of lies on one another. Judgment of lies on one another. Your backup. But Jesus said, I am not alone. But I am my father. And sent me will be, my, be your judge. See, the Father who is in Christ will also be part of the judgment if Christ judge. And that is not the flesh. It's that God looks on the heart. Man look at the outside. So you be measuring the outside. For example, if David was here today, we were wondering, why is David still in his church and haven't been kicked out? This man, David, committed multiple adulteries, had the woman's husband killed, but yet he's still in church. God said, David is a man after my own heart. Now, we got to understand something here now. God was not talking about David the adulterer or David the murderer. You have to go to the word of God and see why God said that. When Nathan went to David and declared that he was the one who did all this stuff, David immediately went to the Lord, went to God, fell on his knees and said, create. Notice his word. He didn't say make over. He said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Create in me, make me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew. He said, all the spirit was bad. And renew a right spirit within me. David was that sincere. And we know God did that. And under those requests, how do we know he did? Because God said David was a man after his own heart, which means God created David a new heart for David's request and renewed the right spirit that was within him. That's why God said that. Can he say that about you? Can he say that about me? Can he say that about us? We need to look at that and see, do we have the same position that David had, a new heart. And God said, when the Holy Ghost has come, you will be a new creation. New. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got a new heart. All things are passed away. And all things are new. That's what the Word of God says in the New Testament. So that's how you can know whether or not you are in or out. Contender or pretender. All right? Verse 17, it is also written in your law, in your law, he's still talking to these Pharisees and Pharisees, in your law, that the testimony of two men is true. The testimony of two men is in your law. Why did he say in your law? Because he's the one who gave the law. 
That's why he can tell them what is in there. Because he gave it in the book of Leviticus. And we look at it also written that in your law, the testimony of two men are true. That's Deuteronomy. Chapter 17, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Paul even quoted it to the Corinthian church. This is direct proof that Jesus is from the Father and is in the Father. Only the Father will know this. But this is direct proof. He knows your laws and our laws. He knows our heart, contrary to what some of us think. So we got to be careful. We got to follow the instructions of the master and suddenly converting, converting his instructions to a story. His instruction. Read like verse 18. I am one that bear witness of myself. I am come that I bear witness of myself. And the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Jesus said, listen to what he said. He said, I bear witness of myself, and the Father bear witness of me. He said, I got a witness, myself and the Father. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And then he went on to say in Genesis, let us make man. Jesus has always been in the bosom of the Father. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 should be read and studied. Without controversy, great is the mystery of Godness. God was manifested in the flesh, seen all in the world, preached unto the Gentiles, Justified in the spirit. If you want one verse in the Bible to confirm that Jesus and God are one, read 1 Timothy 3.16. This is what Paul wrote to Timothy to instruct his followers. And Paul was the last to see the risen Christ. Amen? We need to follow the instructions. Not the story. I am one that bear witness of myself. And the Father that sent me has witness of me. Jesus says again that he bear witness of himself and the Father that sent him also bear witness of him. He never set him separate himself from the Father. Never. This is a clear reference of his plurality, of his deity. It's a clear reference of his deity. First John chapter 5 and verse 7 says this. And this is very seldom mentioned, thought about, discussed in the word of God inside a congregation. There are three that bear record in heaven. There are three they bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear record in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are green in one. You see what I'm saying? There's no separatists in here. And these three agree in one. And all I getting, get understanding. And when we present, it should induce you to follow the instruction. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And when he said, in all I getting, get understanding, you can only get understanding by studying 
You can't get understanding by reading alone. Study. Verse 19 and 20. Then said they unto him, Where is your father? Where is your father? Jesus answered. Here he goes again. You need to know me. Know my father. That's what he said. You don't even know me. And you don't even know my father, but yet you ask me, where is my father? Or who is my father? We need to think about that question that they asked him. We need to think about the response that Jesus gave them by you beginning to study who his father is. And you follow the tree right back to the father and the son of one. You need to know me, nor my father. You don't know neither one of us. If you have known me, you should have known my father. You should know my father. These words spoke Jesus in the treasury. Now, the treasury was in the temple where they collected offerings. And he was in the part of the treasury where the women sat. And the treasury had some chests in there. And one chest only was for the women. And there were 12 others in there that had the names of the song of David on them where the men sat and brought that offering. They wanted to know after where was Jesus' father? They wanted to notice Jesus' answer was that they do not know who Jesus is. Jesus said that if you don't know me, how are you going to know my father? If you don't know my father, how are you going to know me? That's basic. A person cannot know a father without knowing the son. In the natural. A person cannot know the Father without knowing the Son, and vice versa. No man can come to Christ unless he is drawn by the Father. That's in John 6, 37 to 39. You have to remember these things. See, these are not stories. These are instructions for eternal life. Jesus taught in the treasure of the temple, and no man laid hand on him. For his hour had not yet come. You, you know they, they had sought to kill him. But not yet. The time was not now. So they put no hands on him. The treasury. Was a place of women in the temple. Where the women put their offering. Of the 13 chests. There were 13 of them in there. 13. In the temple. For the offering only, only one was for the women. The other 12. Had the sons of Jacob's names on them for the men's offering. Isn't that something? This is a temple. Now, church don't have a basket like this, do they? <laughs> church don't have a basket like that. And this is how it was done then. 21 and 22. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. And you shall not, and you shall seek me. You're going to look for me. And shall not, and shall die in your sins. When you look for me, you can't find me. You're going to die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Where I'm going, you can't come. Now, one day, those of us who are in Christ, according to 1 Thessalonians, When he appear in the sky for his church. Those that are dead in Christ in the grave shall rise first. So they won't be left. They're going to rise first. And we that are alive shall be caught up together with them in the air. You see, the ones in dead in Christ will rise first. And we that are alive going to be caught up together with them to meet him in the air. His feet are not going to touch his earth when he comes back for his church. And when he does that, and the church is gone, the world going to go on as usual. And those who did not go and are left, they have no idea that he has removed his body from this earth. 
And those of you who remain, you need to understand this. All hell has not broken loose because the church is still here in this earth. And as long as the church is in this earth, that which is coming into the earth cannot come. So he would not allow his church to experience and suffer the same things that are going to come and those who don't know him will experience. So that's why he's going to get us out of the way. Study, you're going to find that out. And you're going to run to the word of God and you're going to run to salvation and quit making jokes about Christian people. And then he said, Christ, unless Christ draw you to the Father, that's John 6, 37, 39, Jesus taught in the treasure, that's what he did, and the treasure was where the money was taken. One for the women and 12 for the men. Isn't that so? 21 and 22. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. That's plural. It didn't say die in your sin. Die in your sins. Plural. Isn't that something? I wonder how many sins there are going to be. Die in your sins. How many of us know that a sin of omission and sin of a commission? The sin of commission is the sin that you do every day. Knowingly and unknowingly. The sin of omission are those things that you should be doing not. That's sin of omission. And you got to remember one big, big, huge word. Unbelief is sin. And you die just like everybody else. Jesus is speaking of the sins of unbelief. Where am I going? Where am I going? You cannot go. He previously said that. He said in John 7, 33 to 34, Yet a little while am I with you. Then I go to him that sent me. You shall seek me and shall not find me. You shall seek me and shall not find me. You know the Bible says seek and you shall find? He just said something here that we need to look into. You shall seek me and shall not find me. If you got sin in your body, and you're walking in sin, talking in sin, living in sin, as a lot of us do, we always fall on our knees of Jesus. Look what he just said. You shall seek me, but you shall not find me. You can't seek me in your sins and find me. You got to have a repentant heart. You got to be true. You got to be contrite. You got to be contender, not a pretender. We need to look at that. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? On what he said? Because of what he said? Where I go, you cannot come. Is he going to kill himself? At this point, they finally realized. He was speaking of death, not going to guess where to teach. You need to read John chapter 7, 35 on your own, the person to reading. They did not know that he was preparing to go to the cross to redeem mankind from sin and its judgment, the perfect sacrifice. They did not understand that. They did not understand that. Do we understand? If we don't, we need to study and understand. Paul says, make, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, I believe, make your body a living, living, not a dead one, sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. See, we have responsibility of living holy. Living holy away from sin is a sacrifice. And Paul said we should do that. We should do that. 
verse 21, no, verse 23 and 24. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sin, for ye be believe not me, you're gonna die. Jesus said unto him, You are from beneath, that's the earth. You're from down here, you're not from heaven. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47 says, The first man of the earth, earthly, was Adam. The second man is the Lord from heaven. I am from above, the Lord from heaven. Get that? Read for Corinthians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, class, when you get time. You are of the world. I am not of this world. You know who he, he, he instructs the, the church? You're in the world, but do what? You're not of the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. Even though you're in it freshly, spiritually, you're not. Those are the person who have the Spirit of God. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you're in this world. If you got the spirit of God, you're in this world, but you're what? Not of this world. I told you that you shall die in your sin. If you believe not that I am the Messiah, you shall die in your sins. Plural. Plural. John chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. Here we go. We're going to talk about this Holy Ghost for a second. The comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. He will. Reprove the world. Of sin. Jesus said if I don't go back to heaven. I cannot send you the confidence. Which is the Holy Ghost. And he said one of the things he's going to do. Is reprove the world of sin. He said when I get up. Back to heaven. I'm going to send that confidence. Which is the Holy Ghost. And Lord have mercy, he's here today, proving those who have rejected him of sin, and that's how you're going to end up in hell. Oh, he's here reproving you right now. Of sin, because they believe not on Jesus. You have a lot of people believing a lot of other other things but Jesus. And that's sin, unbelief. Jesus is going to send the comfort, comforter, the Holy Ghost, when he returns to heaven. Guess what? He had returned to heaven. Sitting on the right hand of the Father, the Holy Ghost is what? Now here, in this earth, reproving the world of sin. <coughs> me. And those of us who are in Christ, we are not being approved, reproved of sin, we're being set aside for, from sin. Verse 25 to 27. Then said they unto him, Who are you? Do you ever get that question? Who are you? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Jesus said, I haven't told you this before. I have many things to say and to judge of you. I have many things to say and judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak of the world, those things which I have heard of him. He meant heard from him. He, he, he was sent here for the purpose that he, he, he spoke of. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Now one of the things that the Pharisees asked Jesus, who are you? Jesus answered, them, I am the same one that told you from the beginning. Jesus had already answered this question in verse 12, that he was the light of the world. Jesus first said that he had many things to say and to judge. He has many things to say and to judge. God sent me to speak as I am doing now, the truth. God sent to me to speak as I am done now, 
the truth. I speak to the world of those things that I have heard of him. That's God. It is he who sent me. God sent him to speak to the world. How many times do you hear that? Never. The Pharisees did not understand that Jesus spoke to the Father in heaven. Jesus goes on to tell them about his coming crucifixion, beginning at verse 28. That's for personal study. For your own personal study, for, for further understanding, read John chapter 1, verse 4. Christ is the light of man. Revelation chapter 21, verse 23. Lamb is the light. The Lamb of God is Christ. And read Psalm chapter 27, verse 1. The Lord is my life. We got some study to do, so amen.